CPAC welcoming Orban at Dallas summit days after pure Nazi speech. So I'm not necessarily sure if you've been following how the uh, U.S. fascists are forming an alliance with the fascists in Hungary. And what CPAC and conservatives in America have been doing is they've been kind of cultivating this alliance. You know, they they spoke at CPAC Hungary. They did this meeting with uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil. There was that huge fluff piece that Tucker Carlson did with Bolsonaro. And now they're really getting more entrenched with uh, Viktor Orban. And what's frightening is that Viktor Orban kind of created this blueprint for fascism. And we have some American right-wingers following it. So, for example, most people don't know that the Don't Say Gay Law... Uh, that is something that first originated in Hungary, and Ron DeSantis copied that. And in the same way that Viktor Orban tried to give himself plausible deniability and say, you know, we support gay people while simultaneously legally discriminating against them, Ron DeSantis said the same thing, where he's, you know, he's signing these laws, supporting them, defending them, and also saying, well, we won't tolerate hate in my state. So it feels like they're they're stealing this playbook from Viktor Orban. And as they get further entrenched, what worries me, and I think reasonably so, is the way that uh, Viktor Orban consolidated power is exactly how the next Republican president is going to consolidate power. So let me just read a couple of paragraphs from this article, and I want to get your take on this, Dylan. So with right-wing officials suggesting there is not yet enough evidence of Hungarian authoritarian Viktor Orban's racist views despite his recent speech, which has drawn comparisons to Nazi propaganda, the largest and annual gathering of conservatives in the U.S. is moving forward with plans to host the prime minister next week. Quote, let's listen to the man speak. Matt Schlapp, chair of the Conservative Political Action Committee, said Tuesday ahead of the group summit scheduled to take place in Dallas next week. We'll see what he says. CPAC's wel welcoming of Orban shows that his racist speech is welcomed here, said MSNBC columnist uh, Ruth ben Geit. Speaking to supporters in Romania last weekend, Orban said Hungarians do not want to become a mixed race. Uh, and that countries where Europeans and non-Europeans live amongst each other are no longer nations. He added that a flood of migrants and asylum seekers is being forced on Hungarians. Romanian Foreign Minister Bogdan Arasu called Orban's comments unacceptable, and the Prime Minister's longtime advisor, uh, Zuza Hegedus, announced her resignation from his government over what she called the pure Nazi speech. So that's his longtime advisor, I don't know how you didn't notice that the speech you delivered is a purely Nazi diatribe worthy of Joseph, uh, Joseph Goebbels, Hegedus wrote in an op-ed uh, directed at Orban. So I want to get your take on this. Um, is this something that you can see happening uh, with regard to Republicans in the U.S. following the Orban blueprint because they're very clearly getting in bed with with them. And when you get that along with reports of uh, from Axios, for example, Jonathan Swan wrote about how Trump, if he gets a second term, wants to purge civil servants and install loyalists. How fucked are we, Dylan? I'll just put it that way. Victor Orban is a fucking pig fucker. I hate that son of a bitch. Um, unironically, I think he's one of the most cancerous tumors within Europe, and I think there should be discussions about um, him being just straight up kicked out of things like the European Union. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, other nations like Poland, which have had a historical relationship with Hungary, have defended Viktor Orban, defended him because they they kind of have each other's backs. Now, this is an interesting thing because this actually ties in my reporting. When I was in Poland, I spoke to the former Under Secretary of State um, of Poland. I interviewed him. And the the undersecretary of state is like the secretary of state, but like under. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed him and I asked him a bunch of questions and he spoke perfect English for the entirety of the interview. Right. This is somebody who was involved in the solidarity movement in Poland against the Soviet regime. This is somebody who's extremely well educated, speaks perfect English. He spoke perfect English until I asked him this question. Do you think Poland bears any responsibility for protecting Viktor Orban, who is now backstabbing Ukraine? And he said to me. I have no, I have no data. I, I, so I know I, I don't. It, it was as if like I'm, I'm out of nowhere, just like uh, his brain was sapped from his body. No data. What does that even mean? This is, I didn't ask you a statistical four, four question. Four not found. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it was a strange moment in, in an otherwise brilliant interview. And for me, Viktor Orban is probably somebody who has sadly gotten away with developing an authoritarian regime in Hungary. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it and it's weird to see all the same people who come out and talk about, oh, I got censored on Twitter. I can't believe my, po my post was removed. I didn't get the 
call this person the N word. This is the end of of of, of the legacy of seas of, of of democracy and Plato. Like all these types, go simp for somebody who's actually ripping the guts out of a free press, making it so you need a permit to film anywhere, basically in Hungary. Where if you're a reporter trying to take pictures of the dilapidated conditions that a lot of refugees were living in, or the fence that keeps them boarded out and keeping them in terrible conditions you go out and take pictures of that oh you need a permit okay you go apply for a permit permit denied permit denied permit denied mm -hmm. or it just never processes or it takes forever to process this isn't how a press is press democracy a democratic country is supposed to operate with its press and that's just talking about press freedoms we're not even talking about his control of the elections or his control of other aspects of society or of his centralization of power or of any of his homophobic policies or racist statements or his support for Vladimir Putin, another authoritarian in Europe mm. who's currently invading Ukraine, another country that Viktor Orban doesn't support, right? It's always the far right of Europe that doesn't support Ukraine for some reason. I wonder why. This guy is the worst person you could possibly take and say, this is my freedom advocate mm -hmm. because he hates freedom. He has been constantly curb stomping freedom in Hungary. And if you were choosing him as your model or bringing him to your organization, you were declaring to the world, all those principles the Republican Party is supposedly supposed to stand for, personal liberty, freedom, stuff like that, throw that out the fucking door. Because you don't believe in press freedom if you think Viktor Orban is an inspiration. You don't believe in a free and fair democracy if you think Viktor Orban is a good installation. Small government? You're saying Viktor Orban's the small government guy when he's literally centralizing power around himself? It is It is the bastion of, I would say, right-wing hypocrisy to constantly be saying, like, look at me, I'm the freedom simp. Well, while doing everything you can to like chop up people's civil liberties. This is, he's the worst person you could possibly take uh, for Lincoln's party. Yeah. And, and you know, he is open about all of this too. It's not like he would be uh, offended if you called him an authoritarian. Like he has literally said, you have to control the media. This is what I did. You need to control the media. And once you control the media, then you can uh, consume more power. Like this is what he said at CPAC Hungary, I believe. And I'm paraphrasing what he said, but I mean like this, we're getting to this point where there's no longer any plausible deniability, where conservatives are openly talking about ways that they want to consolidate power. And there's a video of Trump talking about how um, maybe many of you recall in 2020 during the Black Lives Matter protests, Trump not only said when the looting starts, the shooting starts, which is insane for a president to say, but he also threatened to use the Insurrection Act to violently crush protests using the U.S. military. But ultimately, uh, we didn't really see an overt crushing of protests. There were there was a lot of like kidnapping of protesters in unarmed vehicles in my my city of portland oregon um but he didn't go as far as he could have but in this uh, latest speech he's talking about how oh no i would definitely clean up those protests quickly um so they're basically broadcasting to everyone that we're done with democracy as soon as we take power and then you know they, they will say things like charlie kirk for example he said once we take power we're never giving it back oh but it's because you know democrats will just be so unpopular tee he wink wink when the, you don't like it, it's just so frustrating to me that like every single person doesn't see through it. And, and to me, even if there's never going to be this remedy of polarization so long as the Republicans and conservatives are far right. But my issue is if you don't even have this agreement just on a bare level, a basic level of democracy itself, just a minimum democracy. Our democracy is flawed, but democracy nonetheless. If you can't even agree on that, then going forward as a country, we have no hopes. And what's left of our democracy will be depleted. You know, Steve Bannon once said of Viktor Orban that he's the most significant man on the scene right now. This isn't like some new development. People have seen this coming from a miles away, but the people who dragged him in to be the inspiration were the far-right radicals like Steve Bannon. He yeah. was the people who are now moving to normalize what what Viktor Orban has done in Hungary and trying to Americanize it and, and made it this kind of packaged, exportable form of fascism. Fascism in a can <laughs> that you can ship right into your bedroom. Mm -hmm. That is what Viktor Orban has become for right-wing conservatives, uh, con conservatism. Yeah. And I, it's very scary to me because he is the worst aspect of hungarian society and i think one of the big reasons hungary faces all the problems it does today oh and absolutely i just i really don't understand how a bunch of people who 
will pretend to be the Freedom Party can then choose the most anti-freedom person in all of Europe to be the representative. You could have picked anyone else in Europe and and done better. Mm-hmm. The only two people that the only two people that could have been a worse choice would have been Luka. Shanko or Vladimir Putin. That could have been the only two other worst options. Literally anyone would have been better. And they and they somehow landed on the worst guy, the the yeah. most anti-freedom guy. And so for me, I, I feel like this is a prime example of how the freedom aspect of the Republican Party seems to be nothing more than a, than a mirage. Yeah, it's a buzzword with absolutely no meaning to them. Like I made this point uh, the other day, you know, J- Joe Rogan said that he moved to Texas because he wanted freedom. But, you know, compare that to my state of Oregon. Um, I feel like I have more freedom. I can walk into a store and buy pot. Um, I can see any one of my you know, family members who need an abortion get one without any problem whatsoever. You know, so th- this whole freedom thing, they say it as like a buzzword or like a kind of get out of jail free card or an Uno reverse card. But there's no meaning to it. And the, the really horrifying aspect about this is that with Viktor Orban, you know, 10 years ago, you would think that he, he's too extreme and Americans would reject that. But now when you see the normalization of extremism, when you see, you know, the white great replacement theory be echoed on the most popular news show in America and Tucker Carlson, then I feel like, OK, now we're really like we're, we're backsliding in such a horrific you know fashion that. You know, it's it's not necessarily, I think, hyperbolic to expect or worry about an actual fascist authoritarian regime in the United States within the next decade. I think a lot of people are looking to 2024 as like the breaking point. Is that going to be when we descend into authoritarianism at that point or do we still have like a few extra years? It's just, yeah, it's it's really horrifying. The thing that gets me and I, and I think I'll, I'll wrap up my analysis of it here is that. Viktor Orban's party specifically would try to rig elections in a few ways, but one of the big ways they try to do it is by creating fake parties. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is they, and I shit you not, they would find like a homeless person or they would find actual dead people, the actual dead people on voter rolls, and make political parties out of them. Mm -hmm. And then those political parties would be on the ballot to then try to dilute the vote. This is an actual example of real life. Like this is voter fraud, right? This is voter fraud. This is party fraud. This is these people putting these people on the ballot in order to dilute the vote. This is an actual example of dead people voting and being involved in politics. And Republicans are going to take that guy to be the representative when they're then going to go back to Democrats and say, get the dead people off the ballot when they don't even exist here, but they exist there and they're just going to fucking ignore it when it's right there. There's the actual conspiracy that you guys have been talking about for the last fucking 50 years and you're just going to ignore it and accept this guy like it's a big fascist teddy bear. It's again, like it's, it's the author, it's the authoritarianism that they love about him. That is what they love about him. It isn't the freedom. It's the authoritarianism and the culture war aspects. They don't care about, there's no consistent principle with this guy. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Wolf, moralist, wolf, moralist, wolf, moralist. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.